So how, here we're going to finish talking about hydraulic conductivity, its specific discharge, and essentially how fast does water move below ground. Okay, so we talked about hydraulic conductivity already, and to use hydraulic conductivity to figure out how fast water is going, we use it to calculate specific discharge, which is abbreviated Q. And specific discharge is the amount of water flowing across a unit area perpendicular to the flow per unit time. So um, Q here, this is specific discharge, is actually equal to uh, the volume of water per area per time. But the units there work out to this funny sort of length per time because you've got volume, like cubic centimeters, over area, air, which is centimeters squared per time. So the squared centimeters cancel out, so you've got centimeters per time instead of all of the, the centimeters cubed per centimeter squared per time. Okay, anyway. Um, Q at any rate is equal to the hydraulic conductivity in length per time times the hydraulic gradient, which is unitless. And this is also known as Darcy's Law, so you might have heard of that before. Okay, so Q again uh, is just to kind of reinforce this idea is volume per time divided by area. So it's just that the units work out to be length per time. But it actually means the volume of stuff crossing an area in the same direction as flow or perpendicular to, to the flow in a given amount of time. So that's pretty much what it means there. OK. So here is just kind of an example of what that might look like if you were trying to measure specific discharge in a lab. You might have a column so that you'd have a cross-sectional area here at the bottom, and you'd be collecting the volume of water coming through that cross-sectional area over, uh, over a given period of time. So specific discharge then, it means the volume of stuff crossing an area for over a given amount of time. Okay. So specific discharge has velocity units, but represents the water speed if it occurred across that entire cross-section or area of an aquifer. But flow really only happens through these interconnected pore channels, right? So through the void spaces here, it can't go through the particles. So it's representative of this, but water actually has to move through these little, little spaces. So actual measured velocity of groundwater is usually faster than Q. And this is because flow is constricted and has to move through these smaller areas, only the voids. So you can kind of think about it like the difference between water coming out of your hose comes out kind of slowly, but when you put your thumb over it, it kind of shoots out, right? Because you've constricted that flow. Okay, so then we need to turn specific discharge into water velocity. So to do that, we need to take into account the porosity of a soil, so taking into account that constricted area. So the velocity of water is really represented by seepage velocity, and, and non-sorbing chemicals in groundwater can also be represented by seepage velocity. So it's kind of a maximum velocity. OK, so how do we do that? Here is seepage velocity v. We just take the specific discharge and divide by porosity. And again, porosity is the vo total volume of voids divided by the total volume of the soil plus voids. OK, and here is an example that I will do for you guys in a different video, uh, figuring out the specific discharge and then the, um, the rate at which a non-sorbing chemical would move. So that would be seepage velocity. OK, so we've learned about hydraulic conductivity, the ease the, of which water moves through saturated material. We know how to use Darcy's Law to calculate specific discharge, and then actual velocity, otherwise known as seepage velocity. So this is the velocity of water and conservative materials, things that don't sorb or stick to soil in groundwater. And we can calculate this using data or flow nets, but here we're just going to focus on data. OK, so in summary, to find the highest possible flow of solutes in groundwater, we would first calculate specific discharge and then divide that by porosity to get the seepage velocity. Okay, and that's it for this video.